August 29th, 1997, Skynet, a computer system built to protect us, became self-aware. It viewed humanity as a threat to its existence and decided to act. Judgment Day, as we eventually called it, marked the beginning of the war against the machines. Skynet attacks happened almost daily, but the attack that happened on that day was like nothing we'd seen before. Where are the others? Where's the rest of the resistance? I don't know. No! This is private, Jacob. As soon as you get down the street, turn right and run as fast as you can. Now go right. I don't want to go with no, you. No, you don't, but we can't stay here. Who's there? Oh, thank God. You're from the Resistance. See, Patrick? He's going to help us. No, they're going to get us. Please, you need to help me. My little brother, he just won't listen. I'm not going. Leave me alone. I said leave me alone. I know you're scared, but staying here is not an option. I'll protect you and your sister, okay? Uh, okay. Thank you. I'm Jennifer, by the way. I've heard there's an evacuation point near here. Yeah, I know. My people are organizing it. We're heading there right now. I'll take us there. Come on, let's go. Where's the rest of the Resistance? I don't know. I came here looking for them myself. So, it's just you then? This way! Sadine was safe. It was, until all the soldiers were pulled out from the area. Through here! Terminators! Get down! Get down! What's going on? Shh. Aaron said these attacks happen more often as the line gets closer. This Aaron, has she seen the Annihilation Line? Seen it? She's been on the other side of it. We're here. How gracious of you to finally join us. Where's your father? Ah, no! Just let me think. Oh, you're from the Resistance. Thank you for making sure that Jennifer and Patrick got here safe. Are you the guy I spoke to on the radio? 
Nah, I, I don't think so. I haven't been able to reach anybody for a while now, but listen, I know that Colin wants us to go, but I don't know how I feel about leaving anyone behind. Jennifer just got here, and you said yourself that you heard someone on the radio. There could be other people out there. Don't you think somebody should go and look for them? I mean, you're from the Resistance. It's your call. I'll search for other survivors. Good, I'll get the bus ready. Before you go, talk to Erin. She might be able to get you a med kit. Oh, oh, and take this. You'll probably need it. Ryan told me that you might have a med kit for me. Did he now? So I guess he's the one who rations out our supplies. If you really need it, you can have it. But our supplies are scarce, and I'd rather keep it for a real emergency. So you tell me, do you really need it or not? If I'm going out there again, I might need it. Well, you'd better come back with at least a missing limb so that I don't feel that med kit went to waste. Jennifer, what's the holdup? Tin cans coming! Jennifer! Get in! Go, go, go! Hold on, we're getting out of here! Mark's about to pass out. We need to stop soon. Okay, we'll do that. I don't think we've been properly introduced. I'm Ryan. That over there is Erin. She's a doctor of the group. Jennifer's a scavenger, and Colin? Well, you can ask him yourself what he thinks he does. I'm Jacob. I'm a private from the Resistance. Pacific Division. Pacific? You're a long way from home. What you doing down here? My entire division was wiped out. I'm trying to get in touch with the South Division. I've got a message for Commander Baron. So, it's true? The Annihilation Line's coming? It wasn't the Annihilation Line. It was something else. Well, then what was it? To be honest, I'm not sure myself. God damn it! That's as far as this piece of shit will go. Let's get off the road. Pull up over there. We got some time on them, so let's not lose our heads. I'll be on the fucking lookout for tin cans. Aaron, you do what you think is best for Mark. I'll see what I can do about the bus. Jacob, it might take a while, so can you look inside and see if it's safe to stay? Sure. Jennifer, would you help me? Sure. I've been patient with you for the sake of this group. But you had one job today and you dropped the fucking ball. I don't have to listen to this shit. Sure, walk away, asshole. Oh, did I startle you? What do you want? I'm so glad you asked. Since we're stuck here, I figured I'll go see if anything's creeping around the corner. I hear that you're looking for the Resistance, and where I'm heading, they used to have an outpost. I wouldn't mind backup while I'm out there. So what do you say? Buddies? Talk to Ryan and see if he needs anything. I'm moving out now. Let's meet at the bridge. And don't make me wait, will you? Hey. Thanks for earlier. 
If it wasn't for you, I probably would have started completely freaking out. And that wouldn't have done anyone any good. Patrick's been through a lot, you know? I guess we all have. I just wish I could find something that would take his mind off all this. At least for a moment. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. What about your father? What happened to him? Uh, he protected us from a tin can. We were able to sneak out, but he had no chance. When I looked back, he was lying there, dead on the floor. Look, I'm sorry, I, I don't think I'm ready for this. Were there any resistance in Pasadena? They were stationed just outside of town since I can remember. But they moved not that long ago. We tried to convince ourselves that maybe we were safe so they didn't need to be there anymore. But apparently we were wrong. Seems the repair might take a couple days. How's it looking inside? There's a lot of supplies there. Looks like someone left them for us. Nah, seems too much of a convenience. Better keep your eyes open. But speaking of supplies, we don't have much, but we keep everything useful inside this crate. You feel free to look through and pick up what you need. Listen, I know that finding the resistance is your number one priority. But if you stumble upon a set of tools while you're out there, please bring them to me, okay? I must have lost mine during the escape. Good luck out there. Aim at its red eye. You'll see it. It glows like a fucking bacon. Don't you think I know that? The way you're shooting, I thought you'd need all the advice you could get. I can see a crack in that warehouse wall from here. Use explosives to get yourself inside. Or find some other way, I don't care. No guards. Not a good sign. Let's see. Hmm. Looks like they were keeping an eye on an old university hospital not far from here. Oh, they must have moved on to that hospital. All right, I've got everything. What's the status on that factory? Colin? Can you hear me? Colin? Jacob Rivers, marked for termination.
Are you alright? Jacob? Jacob! Hours later, they found me lying in front of her hideout. I made it out alive. But not all of us did. Colin's dead, and the stranger I saw is nowhere to be found. I told them about everything. I said that it wasn't safe for them to be with me. But Jennifer suggested that right now, nowhere is safe, so we might as well stick together. Everyone pulled through as we prepared for the worst. But nothing happened. Jacob? Are you awake? How long have you been sitting there? Not that long. I, I know that you're going to that hospital today, so I went on my first scavenging run. And I found something for oh, you. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you go with your sister? No. As soon as Erin heard that there's a hospital nearby, she asked Jennifer to go look for some medicine. So I, I went alone. D don't tell her that, okay? She's already at the medical district? Yep. Oh, and Ryan wanted to talk to you. Heat from the plasma rifle cauterized the wound. That's why he's not bleeding. Morning. Patrick came to me earlier, asking if I thought you'd like his present. When I saw that it was a single bullet, I wasn't sure if he was being helpful or if it was a warning. I figured he didn't appreciate you looking at his sister like that. How do you feel about Colin's death? What do you want me to tell you? That I feel guilty? That I care? Right now I'm a little more concerned with the living than the dead. Do you need help with anything? No, I'm fine. I had to learn to do things by myself for quite a while, sweetie. Now, tell me what did you really want to ask me? How did you know about the Annihilation Mine? I heard the rumors, like everyone else. And then, like everyone else, I decided to ignore them. I was in the middle of operating on a little girl. When I had finished, I realized that we were surrounded. The machines killed most of us, but they decided to keep me alive. So, that's how I ended up in a camp. Maybe they thought it would be worth having a doctor in there. I don't know. Who else was in that camp with you? Besides me, the machines only took the young and the strong. There were up to ten people squashed together inside magnetic cages like animals. I'll always remember their names and faces. No matter how much time goes by, you were actually the first person that wasn't afraid to ask. They're all scared of me, like, like I'm carrying some sort of disease. But they're still coming to me for medicine. Ironic, isn't it? Ah! Take that, you tin can! You don't stand a chance. Arr! You wanted to talk to me? Good to see you finally turned the corner. I wanted to talk to you. I'm starting to get worried about Jennifer. It's been a while since she left, and at my age, I try to worry as little as possible. If you see her out there, send her back, okay? How's that bus coming along? I'll make a run again, don't worry about it. Besides a couple of rusty rotors, it's got a whole lot of character. The question is, where do we go from here? Do you remember Judgment Day? I do. That's right, I'm that old. My memory ain't as good as it used to be, however, there are some images that stand out in my mind. My brother Tucker hitting on this lady guard, or people covered in mud. But for the life of me, I can't remember the name of that band. You have a brother. I did. Older brother. Well, he was a ladies' man. 
We didn't have tickets to the concert, but he knew how to charm a lady. She let us in. Well, him, I tagged along like I always did. Yeah, it was one of those outdoor festivals. When we got in, we decided to climb this metal tower to get a better view of the stage, you know. So as we're watching this band play their hearts out, we see a burst of bright, ugly light. I went blind for a while. What was it? Took me a while to understand what I was looking at. An atomic mushroom cloud wasn't something we were ever supposed to see. With my bloodshot eyes, the only other thing I could see clearly was uh, people below me being crushed. The tower we were clinging onto started shaking. It finally gave in after the shockwave from the explosion. I closed my eyes and it started falling onto the people below. Oh. Oh, what am I thinking of? I'm usually a light-hearted guy. Why don't we talk about something more positive? Oh, God, I remember the name of that band now. It was Captured by Robots. It's bad enough with those creepy noises. What noises? Every once in a while, there's this unbearable scream coming from that hospital. We need to see what's going on. Let's move. Let me. Picking locks is kind of my thing. Voila. Oh, jeez. Looks like a silverfish got him. They're every scavenger's nightmare. Ooh, look. This poor guy is still holding a sound decoy. Sound decoy? You resistance guys just shoot at everything that moves, don't you? Silverfish are sensitive to noise. So, before it pops up from the ground and starts chasing, you throw a sound decoy. It'll draw any nearby silverfish away. I guess you can take it. He won't be needing it anyway. Did you hear that? That's the sound I was talking about. I don't think you should go any further. And what about you? I have to go. That could be the resistance. I understand. I uh, feel stupid asking you this, but Aaron wanted me to find some antibiotics for Mark. <sighs> I know I'm not making it easy on you, but if you're in there and you find some, she... We would really appreciate it. I'll see what I can do. And remember that your gun won't do you any good against Terminators. So when you see one, do what I do. Sneak past them. I'll be waiting for you at the hideout. Take care. I see you back on your feet. You! I left you a hacking device. It's in the basement of a building off the main street. It will help you get inside that hospital. Right now, you need to start answering some questions. There will be a time for that. But right now, you need to help the people inside. Hello?
Oh, thank God, you're finally here. How did it go? Did you find the soldiers? I did. I helped them escape from that hospital. You don't give up on your people, do you? I like that. So what now? They're supposed to come for me soon. Great. That means that you're going home? No more scavengers constantly nagging you to do things for them? I bet you like the sound of that. Oh, Erin's still up too. Go talk to her. She won't admit it, but she was just as worried as I was. Do you need help with anything? <laughs> Is that your best pickup line? Sorry, that was a bad joke. I, I tend to do that when I'm stressed. I think I got it from my dad. Better that than his mustache, right? Oh, I'm sorry, don't mind me. Seems you were very close. As close as could be. He taught me everything I know. Sometimes without me even knowing. This one time, when I was little, he wanted to make a huge sign that said, Welcome, on the side of our house in Pasadena. So he said, I bet you can't spell that. <laughs> and of course I had to prove him wrong. Believe me, now I know how stupid that was. Not at all. That was very clever. Yeah. He was always full of bright ideas. Thanks for trying to make me feel better. After Judgment Day, my dad turned our house into a safe haven. A home for everyone who'd lost theirs. We were like a family with an endless supply of uncles and aunts. I guess my father wanted to help with the war. We never really used guns. So the only thing we could do was to help others in need. Seems like he helped a lot of people. He did. Right till the very end. Anyway, it was actually really cool. Everybody loved him, and he loved having them around. I think it's because he always had a brand new audience to listen to his bad jokes. He had this really terrible one. He'd walk into the room and ask if anyone had seen his remote because his team was playing. <laughs> they always laughed at it. I'll never understand why. Was he a sports fan? I don't think so. He had a jersey that he wouldn't let anyone touch. But I don't think it was a token of his love of sports. More like a reminder of simpler times. <laughs> Look at me yapping. I'm sorry, you probably have enough on your plate. Anyway, thanks. It's really nice to have someone to talk to. No need to worry. I'm fine. <laughs> Who said I was worried? I've been thinking a lot about it. And if I can, I've decided to join the Resistance. I'll do more good there than here. I'm glad to hear that. I just hope you're better supplied over there than we are. Speaking of which, I don't suppose you found those antibiotics Jennifer went looking for? No, I didn't. If Mark's condition doesn't get better soon, I don't know what else we can do for him. Private Rivers. Yes, sir? I've got a message from South Division's Field Commander Baron. She's agreed to meet with you. She set up a rendezvous point at the unfinished metro station. You'll need to enter the canal system under the bridge. The meeting's supposed to take place tomorrow, so I suggest moving out soon. Understood. And, Rivers, because of what you did for our guys at that hospital, I'll give you a heads up about Commander Baron. Don't expect a warm welcome. Looks like you're leaving us soon. Aaron wants to join me. What about you? What do you think about enlisting? Me? <laughs> no. I still have hope I'll get that bus running again. Also, I don't like the attention Skynet's given you guys. I'd rather stay as far from the line of fire as possible. Patrick, get back here! You better go see what's going on. Is everything all right? Patrick's decided that he wants to be a scavenger. And now he won't come out, even though I'm worried sick he'll get stuck. Get back here right now, Patrick! But there's lots of cool stuff in here. You told me it's our job to find stuff for the group. Your sister is right. Get back here. It's too dangerous. Oh, all right, all right. I'm coming out.
What was that all about just now? I've got a meeting with Commander Baron. I'm leaving soon. Okay. I'm going with you. And don't even try to stop me. Are you sure? What's the matter? Don't they let you boys bring dates? <sighs> Sorry. I probably shouldn't zone out like that with a gun in my hands, huh? Am I making you nervous? Yeah, a little bit. I guess you should be. I don't have any formal training like you. I never even held a gun until... recently. Can I be honest with you? Sure. There's a reason I decided to come here with you. I want to meet Commander Baron myself. They're here. When I heard that Private Rivers of the non-existent Pacific Division wants, no, needs to have a meeting with me, I thought, oh, what a lucky girl I am. But then I started thinking, who is Private Rivers? And why should I treat him as anything other than the deserter he is? So right now I'm hoping you give me a good reason why I shouldn't just skip the court-martial and execute you where you stand. This is bullshit. And who do we have here? A brave scavenger? Rivers, do you always bring unauthorized civilians to fight your battles for you? We would have got to you sooner if you hadn't pulled out all your troops from Pasadena. People died there because of you! And what did you do about it? Did you pick up a gun and fight back? Or did you run like you sewer rats always do? Jennifer's right. There's no need for any of that. Yeah. Today is all about private rivers. So what can you tell me that I don't know already? A few weeks ago, the outpost I was stationed at was ambushed by a Terminator, I think. It was half man, half machine. The entire Pacific Division was wiped out by a single enemy. Half man, half machine? What are you talking about? How did your men let an enemy get that close to you? And we didn't know it was a machine. It could walk, talk, bleed, sweat. There was no way to distinguish it as an enemy. It infiltrated us perfectly. This infiltrator... Is it still alive? I I'm not sure. Okay, for now keep everything to yourself. I don't want any rumors, especially since you only think you saw something. Skynet's coming! We're not done here yet, Rivers. Take this plasma! You're a resistance soldier. Time to act like one. To your positions! Drones! Up there! Fire at will! Don't be shy, Rivers! This is a great time to impress me! I think I got one! More will come! We need to move! Get that door open! What the fuck? Fall back! Fall back! Eyes on that door! Terminators! Go clear! Oh no it's not! Ariel! Go! 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 Neutralized. Shoot those gas canisters. More drones. You with that AK. Take care of them. On it. Through that balcony. I'm all out of ammo. 
Well, you're a scavenger, aren't you? Find some! You can be sure there's gonna be more! Armored spider ahead! Don't let it get near you! More Terminators! How many? I count three! One less! More incoming! Keep your position! Almost there! Got grenades? Fucking throw them! Die already! This was an ambush! They knew we were coming! How did they know? With the Annihilation Line getting closer, they must have eavesdropped on our conversation. We're on their radar now. God damn it! They were waiting for us! We're surrounded! Take positions! I got this! Leaving already? There's too many of them! Hold it! Through here! Come on! Follow her! You want to help someone? 
Help yourself and take his rifle! More of them up here! Stay low! Don't stop shooting! Get inside! We used to have an outpost here, but we were spread out too thin and had to pull everyone back. When the Annihilation Line hit us, we couldn't hold our positions. We would be dead if we stayed. Is that what happened in Pasadena? Exactly. There's a shortcut that'll get us out of here. We just have to make our way to that industrial building. As soon as that aerial moves, we run! It's clear! Go! We're getting close! God, you're okay! Save that for later. We're not safe yet. We need to get the hell out of here. Where to? The shelter! I'm, uh... I'm sorry about before. And I'm sorry about your soldiers. No need for that. You'll have a hard time getting up every morning if you dwell on that too much. Machines don't do that, and if we want to destroy them, neither can we. Rivers, since Pacific Division no longer exists, you will now answer to me. That makes you a part of Techcom. Congratulations. No more sitting around waiting for Skynet to come to you. Over here we go out there and meet the enemy face on. This is it. Resistance Shelter, South Division. Baron, DN38217.
Commander. There with me. Where are the others? Where's my husband? They're dead. Over here is our quartermaster. If you need anything beyond the standard issue equipment, work it out with him. And here's Alvin, residing chief Egghead. Uh, I prefer laboratory director. Like I said, Egghead. He supplies all techcom units with weapon modifications. Everything looks well organized. It is. Everyone pulls their weight here. If someone doesn't, we become weak. And you can probably imagine where I stand on being weak. I'll get right to it. There's a reason I decided to meet you. We intercepted some interesting data. It turns out you're part of a prestigious group. A group of people that Skynet marked for termination. See, John Connor, the leader of the Resistance, is number one on that list. Then, there's me. I know, I'm flattered. Every day, we lead, we fight, and we plan on how to destroy Skynet's central core. So I know exactly why we're on that fucking list. But why would Private Rivers be number three? That infiltrator said something about me being marked for termination. Huh. Interesting. I'll have to have a word with Connor about that. And that brings me to my second point, your first assignment. After the Annihilation Line got to Pasadena, Skynet started building installations there. I want you to go there and collect some intel, so we know what we're up against. Sounds dangerous. It will be. Check with Alvin before you go, he'll have something for you. Remember, you might be valuable to Skynet, but the way I see it, you're still a private. Dismissed. And Rivers! Civilians don't need to know about what happened out there. You're going back to Pasadena? Can't imagine what it's like there now. <clears throat> hey, it's a Pacific Division uniform. Eh, he's a long way from home. I hear you have something for me. I do. Commander Baron wanted me to show you how to customize your weapons. Something I've been working on for some time now. You see, your standard phased plasma is in a 40 watt range. However, you can upgrade its damage, shooting rate, or stability using decoded chips. The same ones you've been collecting from fallen terminators. You can do the upgrades yourself. When you're done, go to the Quartermaster. I believe he has something for you as well. Just try it. I don't have all day. I'm Private Rivers. You got something for me? I've been told you're using old goggles from the Pacific Division. Those aren't even standard issue anymore. Commander Baron asked me to hook you up with the latest version. These babies come equipped with a high-quality camera. What do I do with them? The idea is that when you reach Pasadena, you'll take pictures of Skynet's offensive installations. When you find them, put the goggles on, then aim and shoot. The pictures will be automatically sent to a military satellite that we hijacked from Skynet. They'll give us the necessary intel to prepare for when the Annihilation Line comes. That's it? That's it. We have a place ready for you here when you come back. Before you leave, take a look and see if there's anything else you need. I can get my hands on almost anything, but I don't normally hand out freebies. That's it then. You're leaving us and going back to Pasadena. Not yet. I need to collect the rest of my stuff from our hideout. Fine by me. Let's go.
Please, you need to tell me what happened there. Where's my husband? I'm sorry, I can't talk about that. Please! Jesus, Jacob! We were ambushed, near the unfinished metro station, and he didn't stand a chance. I'm so sorry for your loss. Oh my god. Thank you for telling me this. Thank you for caring. I don't care what Baron says. This woman deserves to hear the truth. Not knowing would destroy her. Aaron would kill to know what happened to her husband. Patrick! Is everything okay? It's Mark. He's dead. Oh, I'm so sorry, kiddo. How are you? Fine. I heard about Mark. What happened? He didn't make it. There was nothing we could have done for him. So, what's new with you? I've been ordered to go to Pasadena to collect some intel. Is there anything you need from there? Right now, I don't need anything. But there's something you might be interested in. When we were running away the other day, Colin was supposed to bring something. Boxes of adrenaline, painkillers, and who knows what else. Since he didn't bring anything with him, I'd imagine everything's still there. Those stimulants might be useful to you. When used in small doses, they can improve focus and alertness. If I were you, I'd take a look. You didn't change your mind about joining the Resistance? No. I'm packed and ready to go. You're the one that kept saying that we're going when in fact we're not. Oh, you really pissed me off. I must say. About that camp. What do you want to know? How did the machines communicate with you? There was this one machine. We called it Nurse Ratchet. It was designed to look almost friendly. It wore an awful, smiling, rubber human face. At the end of every week, it took the weakest of us for experimentation. My cellmate. Karen was pregnant. I knew that was a one-way ticket to the grinder, so I had to plan an escape. What was your plan? I figured our best chance of getting out was with the bodies. That way, hypothermia was the only thing we had to worry about. The baby came early, and Karen died giving birth. She didn't even get to see her child. I had to take action. Me and one other prisoner took the child, and we got to the disposal room, where we covered ourselves with dead bodies. Then we just lay there, waiting for them to throw us out. And they did. They dumped us outside the camp, ready for the grinder. Did they go after you? We heard an alarm, but we were already far away. They hunted us at first, but... They had more important things to do than running after two nobodies with a baby. We ran to protect her, but deep down we were preparing for the worst. Anyway, you're healthy, right? And your bones don't look broken, so stop bothering me. I'll be on my way. <sighs> Talk to Ryan. He wanted to give you something. I see you got that bus running again. Lucky for us, I did. There haven't been any good vibes here since Mark died. Everyone's been itching to get out of here, leave this place behind them. Anyhow, I got something for you. It's called a termination knife. It's supposed to shut down a terminator with a single stab, so if you're sneaking and you want to take them down silently, well, that's your go-to weapon. I guess you could say it terminates Terminators. Wow, that was almost as bad as Jan. Where did you get that? A group of travelers came by earlier. We traded, talked for a while. Actually, they said something that got my attention. Something about meeting a guy out there who kept asking about Jacob Rivers. They said it didn't seem right. 
You don't think it's that thing that you told us about before, do you? Sorry, I probably should have said something right away. What's on your mind? Well, you really got me thinking about old Tucker again. In times like these, I wouldn't mind having him around. He always know what to do. He was the only one who didn't lose his mind after Judgment Day. How did you handle it? I didn't. I couldn't understand it. Nowadays, children are born with the idea of death, but back then, uh, I lived without a clue. I felt sick when I saw blood on TV. Tucker said, we need to be calm right now. I listened to him. We all did. Survivors from the concert. Did you drive someplace safe? It was my first call. Just drive. Gave it a shot. We kept running into these sandstorms. Every car fucked up after a couple of miles. Turned out that atomic dust ain't so great with engines. Finally, we found a couple houses, but the people there were as confused as we were. All the communication went to shit. Tucker managed to find some batteries, and uh, we sat in front of our boombox. They started to list cities to avoid. Cities that were hit by the nuclear bombs. How many cities were hit? I don't know exactly how many, but it took them a couple of minutes just to go through the A's. We looked at each other crying. We just wanted to go home and be with family, but Tucker said that for now, the safest place there is is right where we were. So we decided to stay and start a camp. You're going to Pasadena? Yep, I am. I have a mission for you, a secret mission, super important. Probably the most important of them all. What is it? Could you bring me my chalk? Chalk? Yeah, it's at my house. The one with the beware sign on the side. Could you bring it to me? I mean, if you could. I did bring you that bullet one time. I'll see what I can do. Cool.
That's the last one. Good job with these pictures, Rivers. We're one step closer to preparing a counterattack. I'm starting to see why Skynet isn't so fond of you. Now get your ass back to the shelter. Jacob, how is Pasadena? Uh, you know what? Forget I asked. I don't want to know. I'm just glad that you're all right. And how are you doing? I guess I'm a little nervous before tomorrow. I, I never asked you. What are you planning to do tomorrow? I've been meaning to tell you earlier, but I panicked. And that's because I decided to go with Ryan. We'll find somewhere safe, away from all this. You have to understand, I need to do what's best for Patrick. I'm his big sis. I need to protect him. I... I haven't told him yet. He'll be devastated leaving you and Aaron, but I think it's for the best. Aren't you curious about what happened in Pasadena? No. I think I'd rather keep that place in the past. Actually, I have a confession to make. I've never been outside of Pasadena until now. Can you believe that? That's not surprising. After all, that's where your home is. Where it used to be. Right now I'm going to try someplace new to call home. I did my traveling through pictures and postcards that wanderers brought with them. My favorite had a little flamingo drinking water from a lake on it. Its long red neck curved like a snake. Patrick's mother gave me that postcard. Hmm. It's funny how I never met my mother, but I was around to see Patrick's leave him. I'm sorry to hear about your mother. Don't be. I had a pretty good childhood, apart from the nuclear holocaust and all. I remember the day Patrick's mom brought him in. They were both tired and dirty, so we took care of them. Patrick was crying a lot. He was teething at the time. I think that was what scared her away. She just couldn't handle the crying. Did you blame her? No, I didn't. For some reason, I was mad at my dad. For letting her go, I guess. After she took off, I was devastated. But my father said, You need to grow up. You have a brother now. So I burned the postcard. The little red flamingo flew up in flames. And I promised myself I'd never be weak again. But I guess we all need someone we can be weak with sometimes, don't we? Wake up! We need to move. 
What's going on? Everyone, wake up! You need to get out of here. Who the fuck are you? It doesn't matter. What matters is that you can't stay here any longer. She asks a question, and I suggest answering. You don't want to do that. I've got this place rigged with explosives, and there's a detonator in my pocket. You got what? Would you mind? Lower your gun, Ryan. He's the one that saved my life. What do you want from us? You have to get out of here. Skynet's on its way. They finally found you. What do you mean, they found us? They were looking for us? Not for you. For him. He's essential to winning this war. Skynet knows that. That's why they've been following him for months. I have to make sure nothing happens to him. In a couple of minutes, an infiltrator will walk in here trying to kill him. I can't let that happen. We have to bury that Terminator here once and for all. All right, everybody, you heard him. Let's get moving. I'll get the bus ready. There's no time for that. There's a passage here. It will lead you out. Use it. What was that? All right, everyone, get out! Jacob! Give me that. It's the same one. It's the same model. Leave! Now! How the hell's he still alive? Go! 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 Watch out! Don't just stand there! Run! Baron listened to us. She could no longer deny that this infiltrator was a real threat. She decided to take everyone in, on her terms. The shelter was on high alert, but thanks to the intel I gathered in Pasadena, we slowed the advance of the Annihilation Line and gained some time. Just enough to start preparing the counterattack. Sergeant, at ease. Well, look at you, Sergeant. When you helped us in Pasadena the other day, I was trying really hard not to panic because you were only a private. Sorry for underestimating you. I guess I should salute or something? How's Patrick? Every day a little better. Aaron says he'll be back on his feet in no time. She's done a great job with him. I wish I could repay her somehow. It just doesn't seem that she needs anything. Getting ready for another scavenging run? No, I just came out here to catch my breath. Baron is giving us the entire evening off, believe it or not. Doesn't sound like her. I need to report to Baron. Rivers, DN-46890. The commander is expecting you in the control room, Sergeant. Marachino cherries again. I don't get it. How did they bring that buggy down here? Hey, how are things with you? They got me on canteen duty. You wouldn't believe how creative we have to get to feed everyone. Or maybe I shouldn't tell you that. Are you all right? Me? Honey, I'm about the most well-adjusted person in this goddamn place. It's the others you should be concerned about. You mean Ryan? Ryan ain't so hot either, but that's another story. Jennifer? I'm worried about her. 
I'm the one that asked Baron to give her team a little break. <clears throat> Jennifer's been busy scavenging supplies for the soldiers, and she hardly had time to see Patrick. And now she's finally got a day off. She's avoiding him like the plague. How's Patrick doing? He's fine, but it wouldn't kill you if you checked on him yourself. Is there anything you need? No. I have to say, the Resistance is pretty well supplied. Don't tell me you miss running errands for me. I don't believe that for a second. And what about something other than medicine? Honey, I'm not shy. I'll let you know if I need anything, okay? But thank you for asking. Take care. Uh, Alvin lost his spider scout again. Man, I saw it crawling through the shelter earlier. It almost gave me a heart attack. You wanted to see me? You're finally here. Good. I have a special task for you. I want you to head downtown to check on the doctor. Doctor? Alvin. He's out there making sure that our defense systems are working properly. Ever since we went radio silent, I had a small team of trustworthy messengers maintaining communication between our outposts. They haven't returned, so I want you to go downtown and see why that happened. Could be nothing, but Connor doesn't want any hiccups while he's up there in North Division preparing the attack on Skynet's central core. Is there a problem with the radio? The Annihilation Line is within spitting distance of downtown. We suspect that Skynet will be intercepting all transmissions from that location. So for now, we're going radio silent. That's why I need you to go there personally. Central Core? Skynet's main reactor. The source of all their power. We shut down the Central Core, we shut down Skynet. Connor's preparing the attack as we speak. So you understand we can't have any critical complications at this stage. If you don't mind me asking, how did you end up here? Excuse me if I act a little surprised, Sergeant. But no one in here thinks it's wise to ask their superior personal questions. But since you did, I'll humor you. So, how did I get here? The same way you did. I was born, raised, then given a gun. We don't really have a say in what we do, do we? Or do I assume too much? Was it any different for you? Hmm? Why do you fight, Sergeant? It's the right thing to do. There's nothing noble in what we do. Humans were fighting humans since the beginning of time. It just so happens that right now we have a common enemy. If it wasn't for the machines, we'd probably be fighting each other. That doesn't mean we should give up and stop fighting. No. No, it doesn't. I'm just warning you. Don't hold your breath waiting for all of this to be over. There will always be another war. Besides, I'm not a fighter. When I go out there in the middle of the night with my Westinghouse, I'm not looking for a fight. I look to seek and conquer. I'm not a fighter. I'm a bully. Who wants to be a bully? Believe me. There will come a time when you'll become whatever you need to be to survive. No one ever stands up to bullies. But I have to admit, it has its downsides. One of them being that no one ever asks me a personal question. At least not since Perry died. So congratulations, Rivers. Takes guts to stand up to a bully. I guess since your promotion, you got a little more cocky. Good for you.
Move it! We need a medic over here! I'm telling you, I saw something. Sergeant, we're outnumbered, and they keep bringing more wounded. We don't stand a chance. We have to evacuate. Is Alvin still there? He is, sir. Then we're not leaving. We have to bring him back and see what the hell is going on with those defenses, and brief Commander Baron on what's happening here. I'm moving out. You stay here with the wounded. You want me to break the radio silence? At this point, it doesn't matter, does it? Understood. Go ahead, sir. You two follow me. We have to reach those defense systems. Yes, sir. Spiders up ahead! Got it! Lead the way! This way! Good to see you, Sergeant. What's the status? We've got a defensive perimeter set up just down the road. Doesn't seem to be working. Skynet dropped reinforcements behind their backs. Now they're between a rock and a hard place. All right, we need to reach our guys. Let's clear the way. Take cover! 
rocket! Look for grenades! It won't fucking die! Now, shoot before it reboots! Look for grenades! It won't fucking die! Finally! This way! It's just beyond that overpass! Proceed up that hill. We'll stay here to keep Skynet away from you. in danger! Get up that hill! Follow me! We need to rescue the dock before those tanks reach us! Oh shit! We're too late! They're already here! This is it! Take care of those drones!
It's clear. Wait here. I'll go get the doctor. Alvin. Oh my god, I'm actually glad to see you. What happened here? Why are the defense systems not working? They are working, but their target filtering has been reset to non-hostile. One of Baron's messengers came with the order to temporarily change it, so I did! Baron's messengers? We need to leave now. Yes, let's do that. I'm all for that. Are you alright? We need to move. You don't have to tell me twice. Escort secured. Gah! Go! I don't like this! I don't like any of this! Ariel! Okay, go! It's turning around! It's right behind us! Don't look back! Good idea! You go talk to Commander Baron. I've had enough excitement for one day. They've been bringing back bodies. I was scared you might be one of them. Are you all right? Lay still. Don't move. Thanks for getting us out of there, Sergeant. Rivers. You want to explain to me what the hell happened? We lost downtown. I know that much. But how's that possible? What happened to our defense systems? Alvin says one of our soldiers came with an order directly from you to reset the target settings for non-lethals. He said what? Ah, uh, all right. This is what I want you to do. Find whoever is responsible for sending that order. All the messengers have GPS tracking, so we're keeping tabs on their location. Find them and bring them to me. Understood. And Rivers, despite what I might say about our resident egghead, I truly have a hard time believing that my men are incompetent. So expect the unexpected. And you know what I mean by that. Do you think the infiltrator's back? We won't be sure until you find those messengers and confirm my suspicion. As soon as you know what's going on, radio me. Who's Perry? You mentioned him before. The best soldier I ever fought beside. He was the one who brought me into the Resistance. <laughs> it's actually a funny story. Years ago, when I was just a kid, I saw a Skynet drone attacking some guy. Without thinking, I grabbed a rock and jumped on it. The guy was screaming the whole time while I beat the metal to the ground. Only when I was done did I realize he was trying to stop me. You killed a drone with a rock? Uh, I was young and stupid. Thank God the drone wasn't really armed, otherwise I wouldn't be here to tell you the story. He was a resistance scientist, and that drone was one of his projects. So you can imagine he wasn't too happy when I smashed it to pieces. But he wasn't alone. There was this huge guy with a rifle on his shoulder, almost choking with laughter. <laughs> I sure made his day. That huge guy? Was that Perry? Yes, it was. Commander Perry was in charge of this division before me. That scientist later told me that was the first time he ever heard Perry laugh. Somehow, Perry and I connected. He taught me how to channel my anger and get it under control. He introduced me to Connor, and that's how I got to the 132nd. Whatever happened to the scientist? <sighs> He was always doing his experiments, trying to outsmart Skynet. One day he fucked up, and because of that he's no longer with us. I'd never thought I'd be reminiscing about the day I met them. This may come as a surprise to you, but it was the first medal I ever destroyed. Sounds like you were late in joining the 
destroy Skynet campaign. Before that, it was people, not machines. But that's a different story. Jacob, you got a minute? What's up? I know you're busy, but I found something. Something I think you'll like. A tape from back in the day. I want to play it for you, but my boombox is busted. So uh, if you're out there and find one that works, bring it to me, okay? Can't you ask Jennifer or one of the other scavengers for help? I already did, but they couldn't find anything. Just think about it, okay? Wasn't expecting to find you here. You always seem to be out these days. Yeah, that's true. Lately, I've been making extra runs to stock up on resources. The truth is, I was even thinking about leaving. But right now, I'm just waiting for my team to head back to downtown to look for other survivors. Let's hope there still are some. <clears throat> Why did you want to leave? In the face of what's going on now, it will sound stupid, but... It just got to be a bit much, you know? With Patrick hurt, I started to wonder if I'm even doing him any good by sticking around. I've been trying to protect him all this time, but I couldn't. I've proven that much already. First in Pasadena, then at our hideout. I was thinking that maybe he'd be safer here at the shelter. <coughs> but don't worry, I changed my mind since. <clears throat> okay, I'm seeing two GPS trackers. Who should be our guys? Want the more plasma containers. Looks like Skynet's here for good. Flamethrower. If I could get close enough to take a picture.
one of our guys dealt with himself.
of it that might slow them down a little. The signal's getting stronger. He should be somewhere around here. radio. Baron was right. Skynet's listening. Time to look for the second tracker.
needs to be perfect. Mm -hmm. 